My name is Rita Mossett, and I'm here on my own farm in Linton, North Dakota. And Rita, did you grow up on a farm? Yes, I did. I, I grew up on a dairy farm. Actually, uh, our farm is east of Linton, and it's 10 miles, and my brother's got that farm right now. And when you grew up, how big a family did you have? There were six siblings, six of us, and parents. So yeah, there was three boys and three girls. And where were you in relationship to right the oldest, in the middle. youngest, whatever? Right in the middle. I was uh, the third one from the top. And what type of chores did you did when, do on a dairy farm when you were a kid? When I grew up on a dairy farm, my chores were, actually when I got a little older, I milked cows. I fed calves all the time. I fed the chickens. Um, I did all the yard work too. So yeah, and I helped haul bales, helped haul rocks. Um, I mowed, how do you say, rake ditches. Uh, oh, there's many, tried swathing, drove truck, unloaded trucks. Did you, were there any different chores that you did than the boys your brothers would have done? No, my brothers did pretty much all. I used to help my brothers all the time. My oldest brother and I did a lot of hay hauling. You know, back then we had the small square bales. So he'd throw them up on the trailer, I'd stack them. And if I wasn't stacking them, I was driving the tractor, so. How did your uh, parents feel about the kids doing uh, farm work? It was help. Uh, parents enjoyed our help. Uh, it, without help, sometimes I think they wouldn't have got as much done. You know, it would have been harder work for them. And had they grown up on farms as well? Yes, my parents both grew up on a farm as well. Okay, were they German-Russian? Yes, they were. Their parents were from Russia. They come over, I can't remember the years that they come over, but they did come over. If I remember, I think one of the grandparents actually was going to come over on the Titanic at one time. And he had another guy that wanted to board the boat, you know, in a more serious mode. So he gave his ticket to him. So lucky him. I'm here today. And where was their farm? My parents' farm? My um, grandparents' farm. Grandparents' farm? That's a good question. I can't remember where theirs were. I know my parents, my, my dad grew up north east of Linton, and my mom grew up more or less east of Linton. So they were both from the east side of Linton. But great grandparents, um, they grew up on the same, I basically think my, they grew up the same place. Do you know if they were homesteaders? Um, you don't, so that's fine. Yeah, I don't that's know fine. if they were homesteaders. But um, so the, your, your family have always been in the Linton area. Yes, my family has always been in the Linton area. And how about your husband? My husband grew up here in Linton as well. We went to school together. He's two years older than I am. And uh, we always got along in school, never wanted to date, but uh, here we are. Now, where did you go to school? We went to Linton Public School. Linton Public School is where we went to school. And were your parents pretty pro uh, education. They wanted you to go through high school and then get your, your degrees. My parents didn't have a lot of education. They both went to eighth grade. Um, when we went to school, they did want us to go to college. So I think every one of us in the family did go to college. Uh, my oldest brother, he went to a meat school, basically. He, he was a meat cutter for many years. So I don't think he made it to college, but uh, he did go to the meat cutting school for a while. And where did, you, where did you go to college? I went to Bismarck Junior College. Now it's called Bismarck State College. And what was your degree? My degree was in business. So, yeah. And right after you graduated from college, what happened? Um, when I graduated from college, I basically got a job at the Bismarck Tribune. I worked at the Bismarck Tribune for one year and a half. And I got engaged to get married. So I moved, got a job back home at the VNC Bank. Back then it was called the First National Bank. So I worked for the First National Bank for one year. And then I got pregnant with twins. Well, what I was making at the bank and what they care what it cost, we decided to buy more cows and milk more cows. And there's where we started. When you were in high school and then when you went to college, did you think you'd end up back on the farm? I went to high school not thinking I'd be back home on the farm, but I guess when my husband and I started 
dating. I had a feeling we might back on the farm. He went to school for um, computers and he was offered a job at Bank of North Dakota at the time. And he turned it down to farm. Now, how did you get the, the was it this farmstead that you guys started on? It? We started on this farmstead, yes. Actually, Jerome's parents started, uh, they, they bought this farm in 1979. And then in 1982, Jerome and I bought it from them. So they lived here on the farm with us until 1988. Jerome and I had a trailer house that we lived in until 1988. And then it was the, like the dirty, 80, dirty 80s. You know, we had four years of drought. So it was to the point where it was tough on us. So we had good talk with them and they moved to town and we moved into this house. You know, remodeled it, changed it, you know, with a few things with the trailer house that we had. And, and we moved into the house and they moved to town and retired. Now you got a degree uh, out of high school and you put it to use. Do you think that um, women today that are working, our wives on a farm, let's say, uh, need need to work another job often to provide health insurance to help make ends meet on a farm? Uh, it is difficult on a farm nowadays. You know, um, there's a lot of women, you know, basically the one thing that's kept me home on the farm is the milking. You know, a lot of the women that quit dairy farming, I've noticed, have all found jobs in town because it's a little tougher. Uh, health insurance is expensive. I know um, in the earlier years, I've actually picked up a little job here and there. I know if uh, they had asked for a little help here and there, I did pick it up. I remember when they had that, um, uh, I can't remember that business they had in Linton with uh, credit cards, American, I can't remember what it's called. But uh, I did work there a couple days here and there just to help out once in a while, just to make a little extra money. You know, grow, when the kids were all home, it was a little tougher. So yes, I could see why women work off the farm. Yeah, for health insurance, basically, is one of the reasons. Now, after you had mentioned the daycare situation, is that something that, uh, that is um, a problem for women on the farm? Uh, finding daycare if they want to find daycare? Definitely, daycare is a problem nowadays. Um, you know, basically the daycare they have in our hometown, they're all full. I know I've had, I've seen, I've, we've got a lot of young people back home in our hometown, which is nice to see. And um, they are having difficult time finding daycare. So th those mothers are actually staying home and helping out in the farm. They're just, you know, it's kind of nice to see that happen, but yet I know that they struggle too because there's just no daycare. Have you noticed any change in attitudes, maybe since you were, you were younger, about um, women actually um, either working on the farm or going to the workplace? Uh, there, was there an attitude that maybe women should always just stay at the home and take care of kids and not pursue another career? Right away when I first got married, I think the idea of women working out of the house was like, ah, uh, you know, you should be home helping out on the farm, you know, that's, you know, because I got patted on the back sometimes for staying home helping out, but it's changed over the years, you know, people realize that one income just isn't enough nowadays, you know, you know, especially with that health insurance problem, you know, so it has changed, the attitude has really changed, people aren't making uh, comments anymore to people that are working off the farm. Yeah. Now, how about the the other side of it, uh, with women maybe staying on the farm but not being traditionally just homemakers, you know, actually running the equipment, uh, going out in the field, doing more of the, the intensive labor stuff? What's the attitude towards that one? Or? Yeah, is there a change um, in that, do you think? There's a, I don't know if there's a lot of change in it. I guess it's if you start doing it, you're still doing it. I guess if you've never done it. I know I've known a farmer, farm family where the wife has never done any of it. But um, we always got together and talked and the husband would always say, you could do that too. And you know what, she's doing it too. She's doing everything too, because it's just him and her now. And she's out in the fields more too. You know, I think it's just a matter of mind over matter and you get out there and you do it. And, but there's one thing about doing it. Once you do it, you do it all the time. <laughs> Once you put your foot in the water, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. How about um, in your situation, uh, would it have been, would the farm have been feasible if you hadn't pitched in help? Uh, no, I think 
my pitching in helps because I do a lot of the little stuff. I do the bookkeeping, I do the yard work, uh, I run all the errands, I run and get parts. Um, without all that help, I don't know if it would be feasible. I think my husband would end up finding somebody to help on the farm. I'm free, where hiring somebody would cost. You know, we've looked into it already. Like I said, I've looked into jobs, and that's the one thing my husband's always said, you know what's going on. He said, if I have to hire somebody, i got to teach them all over. He said, well, you know the business and you care, so why would we want to hire somebody? Have you noticed a change in, in, in you guys running the farm um, as your kids grew up and moved away? Yes, I have noticed the change since my kids have gone. Um, we're working many more hours. It seems like there's no end to work anymore. Uh, when my kids were home, they pitched in with chores. I, my husband and I did just the milking a lot of times. My girls would do the, my one girl would do the feeding of the calves. My sons would feed the cows. Uh, they did a lot of the field work. I'm, you know, I hate to say it, but when they were home, they did all the field work. And all of a sudden, when they all left, I was back in the fields. It was a joy to have them around because they were good help. We always said if they do what they're supposed to do, we'll let them do what they want to do as well. And it worked out well because they always did sports and we always backed them up and yet they were always willing to help on the farm. I haven't asked you, how many children do you have? I have four. Yep, I have four children. So you want to tell, should I talk yeah, about them? Yeah, tell them um, who they are and how old they are. And I have a set of twins. Now. They were the first ones. Okay. They were, they were. Just go back, we'll start because okay. I was talking. So, okay, tell me about your children. I have four children and two boys, two girls. The first ones were twins. They were a boy and a girl. Um, my son is in Cedar Rapids, Iowa right now. He's an electrical engineer. He's doing real well for himself. His wife is a massage therapist, which is nice. They have one son, which is four months old. And then I have the other daughter that's a twin. She's in Fargo, North Dakota. She is a doctor of physical therapy and her husband is a um, he's a sales rep for, oh gosh, come on now. How sales rep is fine. Yeah, sales rep. Okay, he's a sales rep. And then I have Justin. He's the one that farms with us. Justin farms with us. His wife is in Bismarck. He, they live in Bismarck, North Dakota. And he works for the USDA. He's a supervisor down in Carson, North Dakota. So he drives every day to work as well. But yet on weekends, he's always home. Um, he takes a lot more than weekends off because he farms quite a bit as well. He's a good help. I mean, he wants to take the farm over one of these days. And the kids and the wife are looking forward to being in my shoes. So, and then my youngest one is Tiffany. She's here on the farm. She works in Bismarck part time. So she's got a grand. She's got a daughter, that's a year old now, and um, I take care of her just about every day, except you know, except for when she's at home. So. In your experience with your friends, um, you have two of the kids who are still involved in farming. Is that typical, or do most of the kids leave? What do you What do you think when you look around at, at you know, your friends and neighbors that have had children that have grown up? Okay, how's that? You want to know why they were? No, I, if if they are, if 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 it's uh, um, typical for you to for like you have two of the kids still involved, so half of your kids are involved. Is that typical of, of other families? Um, in, in the area? Typical families around here, yes. Some of them do have at least one son coming back. You know, it seems like there's always one. If they have some sons, it's always one son that comes back to the farm. Um, for the dairy business, not so much. You know, our son, he's he loves the grain farm. He likes the cattle, but he just isn't into the dairy part of it. So I know once he takes the farm over, the dairy won't be t taken over as well. But um, he'll be farming. He'll do just as probably be just as busy without the dairy. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the breadth of the, as you, we've mentioned dairy farm a few times, but we haven't really mentioned about all the other other activities that you might be involved with on the farm, the other crops that you're, you're involved with. What I'm involved in on the farm, just about everything. The only thing I don't do, I do not spray crops because uh, I that's something I don't want to do. Um, I help with the chores. I help milk cows. I help feed. I feed calves. I clean barn. Um, I bale hay. I rake hay. I cut hay. I do yard work. I truck. I do a lot of trucking. 
a lot of trucking when it comes to harvest time because um, I'm the main trucker. I take the, the grain to the, to the local elevator or else I bring it home and unload it in the grain bins. I have combined. I just don't combine a whole lot because I'm usually trucking. I will not combine sunflowers. I mean, those are that's one crop I will not because that's such a touchy crop because of fires. Uh, what else is there to do? Gosh, we do... What, what, what crops do you guys do? What crops? The crops that we seed usually, um, we have seeded winter wheat. We haven't done any this year. Um, spring wheat we always seed. We always seed barley for our cattle. We, we got alfalfa. We have uh, soybeans this year and we have corn. We always used to seed sunflowers but not this year. We're taking a break from sunflowers. How about dairy farming as a whole? Um, you had mentioned that um, you're not quite sure if, if your son's going to take over the dairy part of it. Is dairy farming something that's on the rise or on the de decline in, in the area? Dairy farming is on the decline. It's kind of sad to say, but most dairy farmers in our area are our age. There aren't many that are much younger, and basically nobody wants to take it over because you don't get no time off. You're there 365 days out of the year. You're there twice a day. You know, it's and to find somebody to come in and help, you need to find somebody that knows what they're doing, because it is a risky business. You know, um, you know, it's something you got to be very careful when you're milking cows, especially. You know, you you want quality milk, so yeah, getting somebody in just to milk your cows, you just got to be careful who you're getting in to milk them, and that's the hard part. Nobody can get hired hands. So you grew up on a dairy farm. Since since the time that you were growing up and first started milking, how has technology changed in the dairy farming industry? Dairy farming has changed a lot since I've been on the dairy farm. When I grew up on a dairy farm, we had a stanchion barn. We'd bring in maybe 10 cows at a time. You know, every other stall, you know, sometimes they'd get in together and we'd squeeze in between them. We'd carry the machine with and we'd put the machine on. You know, you had to wash everything manually. It was, it was different, you know. Uh, when I got married, we had built a brand new barn. We got a double six herringbone barn where the cows come in. We're in a pit, they're above us. Um, we didn't have the automatic takeoffs until the kids all left. They kind of they kind of laugh and joke about it because they always say, yeah, things got easier after we left, you know, because the automatic takeoffs were put in. But there, you know, with just two of us in the barn, a lot of times I'm just, Jerome was in the barn alone or I'm in the barn alone. To operate that many machines was tough, so we got the automatic takeoff. So now, when the cow's done milking, the machine comes off, you know, because you don't want to over milk a cow. That's not good either. So yes, when my kids all left, we did get the automatic takeoff. So it has changed. Everything's automatic. Uh, the washers are automatic, you know, where yeah, just push the button and everything starts. You know, yeah, of course, you want to stick around, make sure everything's working before you leave. But yeah, it's gotten easier. You know, nowadays I hose everything down. You know, we hose everything down with water, we scrub the walls. That is a chore. That's not something I had to do when I grew up on a dairy farm. You know, on a dairy farm, you just swept the floor and then you're done. So there's some things that are good and some things that are a little tougher, you know. It's a matter okay, of... How many cows do you have? Uh, how many cows do we have? We milk right now 105. You know, so overall we have about 300 cattle in our yard, you know, from young to older stock so is that large sounds large large around here is about 300 cows in north dakota you know north dakota uh, we've got some dairy farmers west of us that milk anywhere from three to five hundred but they're probably the only ones you know then we've got a dairy farmer up north by carrington they milk a lot more they milk over a thousand there's not many there's maybe three dairy farmers in north dakota that probably milk more more cows than 300 other than that uh, it's anywhere from 15 cows to 100. So it's when you when you think about um, your <clears throat> breadth of your career in uh, in agriculture uh, and, and being a woman in agriculture, how do you think things have changed since you were a young girl to today? In agriculture, things have changed since I've been a young girl. Um, equipment, for number one, has changed. Back when I grew up with small bales, you worked hard, you know, you had the small bales, you stacked them on a trailer, you took them home, you stacked them again. Uh, you picked rock, you know, where I should go back a little bit, like the bales, were small bales, now we got the round bales. 
we do everything with the tractor. You know, we haul the bales with a tractor. We don't haul them manually anymore with the hands. You know, we have to do the handwork. Uh, rock picking. Nowadays, where I am right now, we don't have rocks. We might have a rock here and there, but when I grew up, we had a lot of rock. So we handpicked rim rocks all the time back then, but nowadays they got rock pickers. So you just hook it up to the tractor, you go out and pick rocks. Yes, there are some people that go out manually pick rocks yet. You know, we will once in a while if we find a rock here and there, you know, pick it up and bring it out. But uh, equipment is basically what's really changed. Back then it was no cabs. You know, we sat outside in a tractor cab, you know, without a tractor cab. You know, you, you got eaten up by mosquitoes. Uh, you, you sat in the heat. You know, where now you got tractor cabs. It's nice to sit inside and have air conditioning. Well, you know, the cabs have changed, but so has the price of the cabs. Haven't yes, it? they have. When we start farming equipment, you know, a good used tractor was $30,000. You know, back now, if you buy a good used tractor, you're spending $100,000. That's how the price has changed. So when you look at your son and your daughter trying to get into agriculture, is, is that a roadblock, the cost of equipment as well as the cost of land? For our son and my daughter-in-law to get into farming, it's not an easy task, you know, because equipment is expensive. Basically, the only way I would say is farming, you know, is a go for young kids nowadays if they have the parents backing them, or if they have a job on the side. That's, it's just gotten that hard, you know, because uh, the takeover farm nowadays, it's worth a lot. Nowadays, the banks, to give you that amount of money to start is kind of hard for the young kids as well. So you got to let them start slowly. Uh, let them buy some equipment, let them get into it, maybe sell them some land down the road, you know, but it's not as easy as it was back in the day when I grew up. How about, we talked about the change in, in agriculture, how about the change in women's role in agriculture since you were younger? Have you seen a change? Living, yes, I did see a change in, in women's role since the day I grew up on a dairy farm. Uh, women are uh, helping out more. Um, but yeah, there's still, you know, back in the day, my, my mother always helped out too where she could, you know, and everything, and she paid bills too and everything, but Things have kind of stayed still the same. The roles are still the same, basically. Um, the only thing different now is a lot of women are working off the farm. You know, where there you see more women at home working on the farm. So um, the roles are still the same. It's just not as many of us are on the farm working. Do you think that even going back to your mother, maybe even your grandmother, do you think that there's always been a sort of partnership between the spouses when it comes to running the farm, managing the farm, making the farm successful? Back in the day, my parents, my mom, my grandmother, they were always part of the farm. They helped out everywhere yet as well. Um, like I said, machinery wasn't as much, you know, they didn't have the big equipment. They probably didn't run machinery as much because they had bigger families. Um, but to help out, give them a ride out to the field, bring them home, uh, help with the milking chores. Women back then, I think, did a lot of the milking chores because back then, there, most farmers were milking maybe 25 to 50 where one woman could handle it. I think a lot of the uh, farmer women back then were milking cows and the men were doing the field work. Uh, I think that was probably more then than it is now. How about cooking? Um, did you, uh, your mom and grandma, uh, teach you how to cook? Did you learn to cook from them? I did learn how to cook from my mother. You know, she's a good cook, my mom. She was a big sweet tooth, too. She still is a sweet tooth to this day. So, yes, she liked a lot of baked goods. I was never big on uh, baked goods. My husband probably craves a lot of baked goods, and I don't bake a lot, but I always make a meal. We, you know, as, as a family, we grew up with, my kids grew up, we always had breakfast together every morning, except for when they were at school. You know, they'd eat breakfast and go. But in the summer times, we had breakfast together. We'd all have lunch, you know, we wouldn't take off for lunch, but my kids and I would always have lunch together and supper was one meal we always ate together. Uh, a lot of the times we'd stop the equipment, come home and eat. You know, 10 to five, I'd call them and say supper's ready. They'd drive in the yard and wash their hands, sit down and eat and it was 20 minutes, you know, so and after that they'd all pick up and do their own work again. Did did you uh, cook any German German restaurant meals? German meals that you learned from your mom? 
Yes, I did. Um, we always make niffle soup. Niffle soup is always a German Russian meal. Uh, my family loves niffle soup. Um, they call it pigs in the blanket, you know, the pigs in the blanket, uh, the old good roasts that they always made. Um, I'm trying to think of some more that I, the homemade soups. Uh, Were you the, the dumpling or the dumplings? Piece? Yes, we just had dumplings a couple of days ago. Actually, yeah, the dumplings with the roasts. Um, gosh, trying Strugle, to think. Strugles. Strugles, not so much of those. You know, my husband likes cheese. Um, what do you call those? Cheese buttons. Cheese buttons. I years ago I might have tried them, but I just don't have the time anymore. You know, it takes time to make some of that stuff. I don't find time to do the cooking like I used to. I still cook, but. Not the stuff that takes a little longer. Well, you're tremendously active, but we were talking earlier, you're also very active in, in the community here in Linton. What are some of the things you do in the community? For our community, I used to be involved with uh, uh, dairy egg days all the time. I used to do that for 25 years. It started in 1984. Um, we used to have 16 dairy candidates, you know, at that time, you know, 16 girls. There was times when I did the little contest and the, and the senior contest all at one time. I just run back and forth to the to the different places they were at. I did that for 25 years, you know, and um, basically I enjoyed it, but my kids were home. Once my kids left, I'd say in 2009 was 25 years. Uh, I just kind of handed it over to somebody else from the bank, and they've been doing it since. Um, I'm still active in, in it, though. They still call me and ask me for some advice here and there. I still try to help them where they need me, um, I, uh, I always take care of all the milk. I order all the milk for the meal all the time. I take care of that. I always get the Dairy Farm Family Award. I always help with that. Um, there's, I set up a booth all the time during Dairy Egg Day so I could s send some recipes home with parents, uh, give the kids some coloring books, and give them a, stucker, a sticker saying, I know a dairy farmer. Um, yeah, this is some of the things I get involved in. I still involved in 4-H. I was a 4-H leader for for 10 years. I was been in 4-H for 18 years with all my kids. Uh, I still do ex static exhibit judging, and uh, I've helped out with the round robins and things like that. Where, where I'm needed, if they call me, if I'm able to, I will. So why don't you tell us just, and it doesn't have to be elaborate, but just tell us a little bit what um, dairy and ag days are, what happens, what, what will happen on Friday? Dairy ag days is big nowadays, you know, it was smaller back then. You know, we used to just have coronations and probably a nude meal and everything. Nowadays it starts out with a color run. People do the color run. They, they used to have the color run. They, they didn't have a color run, they had a run back then too, but now they have a color run. They start out with that and then they do the contest. They have the judging of all the kids. Uh, they have judges for everyone. and. And then they have a, they have booths. They have people coming in, um, setting up for Avon, setting up for, you know, I guess all these different kind of creative things. You know, you could set up for crafts, you know, crafts and everything. You know, there's all kinds of booths setting up where people can go along shopping, doing whatever they want to do that they like to do. Um, they have their free lunch, usually at 1130. Uh, nowadays, they have the parade at 1.30. They have a big parade. It's, it's a big parade. I'm really amazed how it's gotten because uh, Dairy and Egg Days is actually bigger than 4th of July. You know, it's amazing. And then they have the parade, and then after the parade, they have the coronation. After the coronation, they have, like, free ice cream and activities all over. They've got uh, tractor pulls to, oh, man, I can't remember all of them. I guess I, if I don't have to list in front of me, I can't remember it all, but... They have a lot of things going on for kids to enjoy. And then later on during the day, they have uh, a street dance. So they have a band that comes to Linton, and they actually have a street dance as well. Do you know why you got started? You know, that was something that was back in the 60s that was started already. Actually, the neighbor of mine, that no longer is a, na a neighbor of mine, she they did it. And it started from Strasburg, I think. Uh, if I remember right, it started up in Strasburg, and it's been going since. You know, at one point in our lives, it was starting to die out a little bit, and I kind of went to Linton and went to the Linton Chamber and said, if uh, we don't get some support, we'll take it back to Strasburg. And you know what? From there on, it's been a big deal. It's a, it's a big go in Linton. Is it important for people like you who um, support events in Linton 
so that Lightning can stay an active community? It is important to to have events in Linton, you know, to have people come to town. It brings business to town. You know, the farmers, they bring business to town. And when you have something for the farmers, they come to town and they will spend their money in town. You know, right now they have, uh, they have deals at the restaurants, you know, where not everybody likes a free lunch. You know, everybody doesn't want to eat the hot dog or the uh, whatever they have. I'm not sure what they have this year, but they have milk anyway. But uh, not everybody likes to eat in the streets, so some go to the restaurants and some go to the pizza places. They're all busy, so it brings business to town. It's a good thing. You know, it's a real good thing. Are you involved in, your, in, in church activities in town? I am involved in the church. I am a Catholic daughter. I've been a Catholic daughter now for almost 10 years, if not more. I can't remember when I started, but I would like to be more involved, but I don't have the time. Um, I have been, I have done in the past, I have cooked meals, helped cook meals and helped serve meals. We've done like the, some of the funerals in the area. We've done, oh, we had a um, uh, conf uh, confirmation one time we did for 300 people. We would cook for 300 people. And I was the youngest one there, of course. You know, I'm, there's not too many young ones in our club anymore so when oh, you're you when, me, what, the Catholic Daughters is that a club? What yep it's me? an organization Catholic Daughters is uh, an organization through the Catholics um, it's it's a uh, doesn't have a lot of women in that you know uh, Christian Mothers is a little bit more um, got a little more people involved in that one Catholic Daughters basically there's not as many young ones so when you do the cooking and stuff you do the lifting and the a little more stuff but I just like to be a little more involved but I don't have as much time sometimes. Well it's awfully tough because you yeah. did your role as a mother and now you're doing your role as a grandmother. So. Yeah and then like I said when we have our church fairs and stuff I usually get involved in that. I usually do one thing. They always sign up for one thing. You know I've uh, peeled potatoes, peeled carrots, uh, I've cut lettuce, I've uh, waited on people, tables and I've, I've done that. I've baked pies you know, I've cut pies. You know, I try to put my spot, put myself in a spot where I know I can be there. You know, it's usually after chores or before chores or something like that. So we've been talking for a while. Is there anything about the topic of women in agriculture um, that you, you know, you haven't talked about or you'd like to talk about? Anything we haven't talked about? I am involved in a lot of organizations, you know, as a dairy, as a dairy farmer. Um, I've been asked to do, I've been, how do you say it, I've been uh, voted on for Midwest Dairy. I am on the state board right now. I'm a district president, and then I'm the secretary in state for Midwest Dairy. Um, there, we go to the, all the conventions and stuff, which is maybe once a year the convention, and it's maybe two meetings two times a year where we get together and we, we discuss what we need to do for more promoting and what we need to do to get people to drink more milk and all that stuff. You know, we're always trying to get people to drink more milk, you know, and uh, then I am involved in Land O'Lakes as well. Um, I gotten on that a couple of years ago, Land O'Lakes. Okay, well, when you mention what Land O'Lakes is, uh, you're involved with Land O'Lakes, which is? Land O'Lakes is the company we sell our milk to. And I am uh, the Land O'Lakes unit delegate. And from there I go to state, or we're region 66. And I am also on the nominating committee chair. So I'm always in charge of getting people to run for the next year. So that's not always an easy task because you got to call them maybe five times before. And then when they finally say yes, then you got to get them to fill out their application and get it in. It's, it's actually fun because you talk to the farmers. You get to know them, and that's the one thing I like about my organizations I'm involved is getting to know the dairy farmers, and we all have something in common, so is that's it, what's is fun. Is it uncommon for a woman to be in your position doing that? No, it isn't uncommon for a woman to be in my position. Nowadays, it's half and half already. So, yes, there are a lot of dairy women on the board as well nowadays. You know, when I first started, there were more men, but it's changed. Women are taking a role in it too as well, and they do a lot of work, you know. I guess maybe they're just a little more organized. I don't know. <laughs> um, have your, has your firm won any awards? Uh, yes, in 1996, I think we won an award. Um, gosh, we've been on for uh, quality awards, uh, 
trying to think of all the awards. I know for many years we were with Cass Clay before we were with Land O'Lakes. We won an award every year with Cass Clay for quality awards. Um, nowadays we're with Land O'Lakes. Um, they only give out two quality awards, so basically we kind of miss out on that. We're on the borderline all the time, and everybody's on the borderline for that one.